we take a look at the Corona tail of the tape. DeMarco's taller, but the younger Figueroa with the two inch reach advantage. Big thing to note here, Figueroa weighing in at 151, DeMarco at 149. Two former lightweight champs who were supposed to be fighting at a super lightweight tonight. Instead, it's at a catch weight that's well above their division's 140 pound limit. Let's go back to arena announcer, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, from the AT&T Center, live on NBC, the time has come for the Premier Boxing Champions main event, 12 rounds of action in the welterweight division. At ringside, your three judges, Valerie Dorsett, Glenn Feldman, and Larry Hazard Jr. And the referee in charge of the action is John Shorley. And now, introducing first the red corner, he wears the black and blue, the veteran. Tonight brings 31 professional victories, 23 by knockout, along with five defeats and one draw. From Tijuana, Mexico, the former lightweight champion, Antonio De Marco. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, he wears the black and silver. As a professional, he's undefeated with 25 victories, no defeats, and one draw, 18. Wins coming by way of knockout from West Laco, Texas. Introducing the former lightweight champion, Omar Pantarita Figueroa Jr. Omar Figueroa Jr., the big favorite here out of West Luco, Texas. Okay, these trunks are good. These trunks are high, so here, right here, okay? Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. And guys, both Figueroa and DeMarco are fighting two divisions above where they last fought, which means about 10 pounds more than customary. How do you think this will affect each guy? Uh, you know, both guys have a tendency to gain weight after the weigh-in, which is fine, Mar, but the problem is, you know, like they said, uh, you know, the kid was a champion 135 pounds, and now he's at 151, so it's going to be interesting. During the week, both camps came to an agreement on this, but it was Figueroa who actually would not have made the weight. This is scheduled for 10 rounds. DeMarco is a southpaw. Figueroa has faced only one lefty in his last 14 fights over four and a half years. That was that wild bout against Nahito Arakawa here at the uh, AT&T Center. And Mar Figueroa is going to go back and forth from orthodox and southpaw as well and kind of feel out DeMarco, see which one he's more comfortable with. <laughs> Figueroa never really, I mean, there's no feeling out process. He, he told me that he, he just likes to take it to his opponent, make them feel like they're in a phone booth. <laughs> no room. Nice right hook by Figueroa a second ago. Ray really got the attention of DeMarco. And a correction, this is a 12-round fight. A 10, as I mentioned. And this is round one. Antonio DeMarco appears to have slowed down. He's lost his last two fights, although both against quality opposition. Jesse Vargas and Rancis Bartholomew, both guys, uh, you know, very good fighters. But this is a different type of style for him, too, Marv. You got a guy in Figueroa who's going to come right down the middle, and uh, wasn't the case in his last two fights. As he just did right there, right down the middle. Then using the left hook, he doubles up, triples. Well, Figueroa makes it hard for an opponent because, again, he just wails his way in. He finds his way inside and throws punches in bunches. Let his hands go. And speaking of letting your hands go, Ray, DeMarco's got to let his hands go on the ropes there. He can't just sit there and withstand the offensive uh, assault from Figueroa. When well, punches are coming at all angles, I think well, good, that was a good shot there by... Big left hand by DeMarco. DeMarco. Figueroa's last fight in an over-the-weight bout, won by unanimous decision over Ricky Burns. Three of his last four wins have come by decision. Slight height advantage, as you can see, for Antonio DeMarco, who's at 5'10". 
Ray, what do you like about Figueroa as a boxer? Well, first of all, he's he's mentally tough. I mean, he's so positive, and he's in great shape. He's perpetual motion. Those great shots. A lot of qualities to this young man. So that is the end of round one. All right, PJ, what does DeMarco have to do to beat Figueroa? Well, DeMarco, you know, Marv, he's got a lot of experience, and he's been in with, with a very high level of opposition, so he can use that experience tonight. You saw the first round, DeMarco didn't have many moments, but he's got to pick his spots, and he's got to wait for Figueroa to just bowl right in and pick his shots and make him pay. Ray, how about Figueroa against the against the southpaw slants. Well, Figueroa is doing what he does best. He overwhelms his opponent. He goes in there, throws shots, and he's perpetual motion. Punches, uh, punches and bunches. I mean, really, whatever opportunity he gets, he takes advantage of it. Figueroa has fought three times here in San Antonio, once in this arena, winning that unanimous decision over Arakawa in a fierce fight which gave the interim lightweight uh, title. Eventually, he was elevated to uh, full champion status over Adrian Broner as Broner left the division. And Figueroa, from time to time, will switch to uh, Southpaw. We told that Figueroa, in that opening round, threw 112 punches. DeMarco <laughs> threw 33. And Figueroa just keeps coming. And the thing that's very difficult about Figueroa, Marv, he doesn't give you a chance to think or digest anything. He's on you, he's smothering you, and he's always hitting you with punches uh, from the correct angles. And very good uppercuts and very good hooks on the inside. Right? And different angles too, BJ. I mean, he, he just throws a, just a barrage of punches. He's always inside. His punch selection is very good. And you see the head placement there. You see him trying to get his head to the outside of, uh, of DeMarco so he can set up that left hook. And then he slides back over to the other side and puts himself in position to land another power shot. And the fight we talked about against Nahito Arakawa, Figueroa actually landed an incredible 450 power shots. <laughs> That's an incredible amount. That's about the number of punches I shoot in a fight. This guy landed that many power shots. That's a lot of power, Marv. But you can see why he does that. Why he likes to smother his opponents and really frustrate him. And on the inside, he does very thing. Uh, he does a lot of things that are difficult to see very well. Figueroa, 25 and 0, one draw, 18 by knockout. He's won 15 straight, following an eight-round draw. That was back in November of 2010. Demarco at 31 and 5 with a draw at 23 by KO. Look how he moves his head from side to side. Nice stationary target. Let those hands go. I was just going to say that. You see the positioning of the head, and that's how he sets up his offensive arsenal, Ray. Very good job. Very subtle moves, but, uh, you know, definitely veteran tricks. Wow, look at those numbers. 72 total punches landed by Figueroa. Just 17 by DeMarco. And he's really not giving DeMarco a chance to uh, reset or think or figure out any type of strategy. He's pretty much telling DeMarco, hey, you're going to fight my fight whether you like it or not. His whole thing, Figueroa, is to make these guys think they're in a phone booth. Not much room, nowhere to go. Nice right hook a second ago from DeMarco, guys. Not nearly enough, but at least he's connecting when he lets go. Should give him some encouragement to shoot more punches, huh, Ray? <laughs> That's more punches here. It's amazing he does not get arm weary. <laughs> Particularly when you consider the, as I mentioned, the 450 power shots that he landed. And a power shot is considered anything that's not a jab, so yes, it is funny, Mark. So we have come to the end of the second round. Hey! And taking a look at Omar Figueroa, what he does to make himself so successful. He likes to fight on the inside. He doesn't just try to get inside, he runs inside. He makes it a phone booth type of fight and makes his opponents very uncomfortable. Now also, while he's coming in, he's not just looking to get in and land the shots. He's punching while he's getting in, Ray. 
keeping uh, position properly. And here's some of the work he did in that last round. Overwhelmed DeMarco in that last round, guys, and uh, put himself in position to land a lot of good power shots. P.J. Figueroa says since he moved up in weight, he feels stronger than ever, and we are seeing signs of that here over the first couple of rounds. We are, but I think Marv, in this particular, you know, weight, um, you know, 151, he's not going to be a factor in this junior middleweight division. Uh, you know, he was at 140, maybe 147, possibly, but I mean, there's a lot of good names in that division, so it would be very interesting. I think that this weight is his natural weight. He, I think he would prefer to fight at a lower weight. I think you'd have to to be successful, Rick. You know, he won a world title at 135, and uh, is definitely a name at 140, but to jump up past 147 to 151, that's a, that's a big jump. That's a big jump. Major problem for Figueroa during the course of his career. He's had an injury hit last couple of years. This fight originally scheduled for September. Had to postpone it after hurting his left elbow. He's also had a broken left hand and other assorted injuries, and he feels because of all his, his ailments, the boxing world has not taken him seriously. He's particularly had chronic problems with his hands and his knuckles. Not good. I've had problems with my, my knuckles for years, more so as an amateur. Marvin, when you land almost 500 power punches in a fight, you're going to have problems with your knuckles. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. It doesn't matter who's wrapping your hands. I've tested your knuckles recently, Ray. I thought you, know, <laughs> you still had it. That was at the makeup. I see. <laughs> and this is actually a bit of a slower pace for Figueroa. Normally he comes right out, gets on the chest at DeMarco. I wonder what DeMarco landed to uh, convince Figueroa otherwise. But see, now here, it's like, now here's the phone booth. Close and break his man down. Nice right hook to the body by DeMarco, but he's got to do a lot more of it, Ray. Figueroa is just way too busy. DeMarco doesn't use his height to his advantage. Good uppercut just now, but he doesn't use his height to his advantage. He uses his reach. DeMarco looks at a 5'10", so he has two and a half inches on Figueroa. All the height and all the reach is completely negated, Mark, when you're chest to chest, head to head. And you see the positioning of the head. We talked about this earlier, but I can't stress it enough. How Figueroa gets to one side and rips those shots. And especially against the ropes, you give him the, you give him Figueroa the, an opportunity to really work your body. Yes, Ray, because when Figueroa is against the ropes, or when uh, DeMarco's against the ropes like that, look at his feet. They're squared up. He can't get any leverage on his punches that way. And to this point, Figueroa has landed nearly 300 punches to 105 for DeMarco. Good exchange right here. DeMarco caught him with the right hook, Marv. Figueroa coming back with the left hand. Good exchange of the corner between Figueroa and DeMarco. And let's take a look at what happened here. Both guys exchanging. Figueroa landed some nice body shots. Well, DeMarco what, snuck that right hook in a few what, times also. And what this exchange told me was the fact that DeMarco could hurt Figueroa. He definitely got his attention with that right hook, didn't he, Rick? Big time. Good shot. And like we talked about in the pre-fight analysis, no one ever accused DeMarco of not having heavy hands. The kid could punch. You know what amazed me about the Figueroa? I know he said it at the fighter meeting. He doesn't watch video of his opponents. And I don't know if you guys can understand that concept. I mean, I would think you'd want to see who you're going up against. Always. I mean, it's such an advantage. It's such a helpful tool to understand, to know your opponent. I understand the fact that they're not going to fight the exact same way against you, but you can see tendencies, you can see habits, you can see uh, things they don't do correctly and take advantage of those things in a close fight. All right, let's check out our unofficial score, boxing historian Steve Farhood, who has the first three rounds, as you might expect, for Figueroa. Well, Marv, the third round was debatable, certainly, because DeMarco landed some really big power shots toward the end. First two rounds, obviously Figueroa clearly outworking DeMarco, not even close in terms of punches thrown or landed. So at best, it's 3-0 for Figueroa. At worst, it's 2-1. 
In our earlier fight, it was Chris Ariola in a disputed split position over Travis Kaufman. They went the full 12, couple of heavyweights in a battle. And you get the feel here, Marv, that as Figueroa is moving up in weight, you know, he's a volume puncher. He's always he's always been that, not so much of a one-punch guy, but the punches maybe aren't having as much of an effect as they do on some of the smaller guys as they are a bigger guy. DeMarco's standing in there pretty good still, Rick. Well, DeMarco, well, he's actually, again, he should not be on, on those ropes. He should be using that height. And he, I tell you, his punches are very sharp, too. DeMarco's punches are very sharp, crisp, and powerful. I mean, Steve said it perfectly. He's not doing enough to win these rounds, but he doesn't seem too affected by the punches of DeMarco when he's able to return fire nicely. But look at the punches that are landing against Figueroa. Figueroa. DeMarco. DeMarco's really sharp punches. He has to put them together, though. Correct. He's getting in those right hands, but just one at a time. But you can understand why Figueroa's had uh, some difficulty with his hands and his knuckles because of the large amount of pounding that he does every fight. in so much volume, like Figueroa. There's a lot of openings to hit him with counter shots, so you gotta pick your spots and make your guy pay to slow down his offensive attack. DeMarco just need to let both hands go. Get off the ropes, and throw punches, throw combinations. Good, good right hand landed by Figueroa. Figueroa continues with combinations. DeMarco right back. It's two or three to one. And we see some good action. DeMarco really didn't th shoot enough punches the whole round. But then at the very end, he had somewhat of an explosion and hit Figueroa with a lot of good power shots on the inside. That was a great, great combination by DeMarco. On to round five, scheduled for 12. Omar Figueroa Jr., 25-year-old from West Luco, Texas, which is located south of San Antonio. Going up against Antonio Marco, the 29-year-old from Mexico, who's 31-5, 23 by an knockout. Now let's go to Kenny Rice in the corner of Figueroa. All right, thanks, Marv. I'm with Omar Sr., the trainer and the father. What about your son's fight so far? Yeah, we knew it was a tough fight. The, the Marco came to fight, and you see in the fight, I mean, it's. People are enjoying it. Uh, it is a tough fight, so yes, sir. Omar is throwing a bunch of punches right now. Any frustration that this is uh, still unfazing DeMarco, it appears. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, DeMarco came to fight. Like I said, he got ready. He had four months to get ready, and he's showing it right now. I mean, this, this, this is a war. It is so far. Thank you, Marv. All right, Omar Figueroa Sr. in the corner of his son. Antonio DeMarco, very tough, but in recent fights, uh, he's had a shaky chin. And he's been very shaky defensively. And obviously, the strategy of Figueroa is to continue going at him. It has been non-stop. To maintain this tempo, it's, uh, it's, it's remarkable. The Figueroa, I mean, he's in tremendous shape to uh, just pace this tempo. The amount of punches that he throws is amazing. It takes a special type of fighter to be able to do that, Ray. Um, you know, he comes right out, guns are blazing, no feel out. But DeMarco's starting to get in there with some shots. Obviously not enough to win the rounds, but he's landing clean when he lands. Great shot by DeMarco. And landing with uppercuts to the chin of DeMarco. You know, obviously Figueroa is stealing these rounds with the, uh, with the work rate. But it's not like DeMarco can't find him when he wants to. It's only when DeMarco goes against the ropes that he, he loses that round. It goes into those lapses where he's just getting outworked. And look at his feet. It's very difficult to be able to punch when both of your feet are square like that. And also, there's no power. There's no leverage there with both feet that far apart. DeMarco, not a guy with what you label great hand speed. 
It's not bad though, Marv. It's crisp. It's not. It's not bad at all. You know, seeing him live. To this point, Figueroa has thrown over 500 punches to 205 for DeMarco. And it continues as this fifth round comes to a close. Figueroa is on par to throw over 1,200 punches. <laughs> We're in a sixth round. This is the mathematics of our Steve Farmer, actually, should be pointed out. Now, let's check it with Paul. Mark, thank you. Antonio's hanging in there, but what can he do to take this to the next level? You know, what, we're, uh, what we had worked on is for him to use his distance, use his combination. We know we knew that uh, Mark was going to be on top of him. So, work his distance in the middle of the ring. If you notice, when he hits him to the body, he takes care of him. He worked, he trained up at uh, Spring Mountain Youth Camp in Las Vegas. It's elevation 8300, so in great shape he is, 100%. Can, can he ratchet up the punch count and match the the offensive level he's saying? The the, the better thing about Antonio is that, that he actually he, he he actually gets better as the fight goes on. And Omar looks like he's getting tired of me, so we, we hope that's the case. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. All right, Paul Bergmeister in the corner of James Pena, the trainer of Antonio DeMarco. And he's referring to that late knockout of Jorge Linares that, uh, you know, Antonio DeMarco scored in a fight where he was losing the fight, and that's how he won that uh, championship. Omar Figueroa introduced to boxing at the age of six by his dad and trainer, Omar Sr., so he could defend himself when Omar Jr. graduated high school. He actually received an academic scholarship to Texas A&M, also began boxing professionally following a long amateur career. He had nearly 20 amateur bouts in Mexico and uh, 60 more in the United States. In those areas there, Marv, that's what DeMarco's got to work. He can't just stand straight up and let Figueroa hit him 15, 20, 25 times with that one unanswered blow. That was a good shot by DeMarco, long left, left hand. And one thing I like about Figueroa, he says, titles don't motivate me, good opponents do. I mean, he wants to fight the best out there he's fighting a good fight guys there's no question about it but after this fight he's gonna have to reevaluate him and his team and look back and say hey is 151 really the correct way for us uppercut landed by Figueroa but he's still very fun to watch because of the high, high punch output there's so much action in every Figueroa fight it's amazing to see a boxer throw this many punches He just keeps coming. So we are halfway through this 12 round bout. Don't follow me, ho. You gotta cut him off. Okay, you're gonna run into something we don't wanna run into right now. So I want a lot of head movement. Punches and then the head movement again. Hey, Do you understand? It is on to round seven. And it has been all Omar Figueroa Jr. over Antonio DeMarco. An exceptional number of punches thrown by Figueroa. Yeah, he's been ultra busy, Marv. He's uh you know, breaking his own records by how much he shoot. Look at the punches by round landed, not even thrown. Those are uh, <laughs> those are flyweight numbers, guys. Not uh, 151 junior middleweight numbers, right there. I need to check my numbers. <laughs> no comparison. Really, is an inflated number, and and you wonder if he will run out of steam. I don't think he will, Mark. This is just kind of the way he fights. But you see, DeMarco came out of the beginning of this round with a different temperament. You know, he's not going straight with his back to the ropes this round. He's maintaining his ground, and he's getting that left hand in there. And DeMarco coming back. 
with a combination. We have not seen much of that. You know, DeMarco's quarter told us during the last round, hey, he gets stronger during the, as the fight goes on, guys. So don't write him off just yet. Good start to this round. What DeMarco should be doing, throw a punch and then spin. Get out. 100%. Give him an angle. Can't fall into these 15 and 20 second lapses where he gives Figueroa the opportunity to pile up the points. And those body shots being thrown by Figueroa do stink. I mean, he is landing hard. Left hand from DeMarco. And a right and another left. Oh, he caught him on the chin. Having his best round of the fight, Marv. He's landing some very accurate punches. And there you see the spin that Ray just alluded to. Ray, I think he heard you talking from inside the ring. Well, he, he's doing the right thing here. Giving him angles. And using his hand speed. Did he let Figueroa, you know, maybe play a little possum, punch himself out a little bit, and then he's going to turn it on in the back, uh, back end of the fight. But Figueroa right back with a combination. And that to the body. Figueroa doing some real good work in there, Mar, but the punches just aren't near as clean as the ones that DeMarco lands. It's pretty exciting, like firecrackers whenever he lands. It is a thing of beauty, the way Figueroa, with the way he throws his punches to the body. The combination he's throwing to the body. And with the intensity. And Figueroa's got to be careful not to fall into lapses himself, where he's not just sitting on the inside and letting DeMarco plant his feet and rip those oh, four punch combinations. DeMarco with a strong combination. Good round here for Antonio DeMarco. Some really good back and forth action between DeMarco and Figueroa here in that last round. Both guys landing a lot of heavy artillery and DeMarco really coming alive at some moments in that round. And then later, DeMarco really reminded us why at one time he was a world champion, landing crisp, clean shots against a very aggressive Figueroa and sunk some nice body shots in there as well, guys. Antonio DeMarco, one time lightweight title holder in 2011 and 2012 and Omar Figueroa Jr. also a one-time lightweight titleist. But finally DeMarco getting into it in round seven. I mean Figueroa sticks to his man like he's glue. I mean <laughs> he just he's right there. Doesn't like distance, does he, Ray? Not at all. I mean, he's right there. And if you know that and you're DeMarco, you're going to force Figueroa to take some distance. Hit him in the body. Push him off. Step out. Get those angles. He had a good last round. He's got to use that momentum and take it into the back end of the fight, Ray. Well, the uppercuts that DeMarco is throwing, that's great. When you raise the head, then you step around and throw your hook. 100%. And it's easy to land those uppercuts when you've got the guy sitting right in front of you, squared up like uh, Figueroa's falling into those types of, uh, those types of habits. Figueroa now has thrown 676 punches, and he's landed 259, 38%. Have you ever fought anyone who threw that many punches, Ray? Uh, I can't remember. They did. <laughs> no one no, no, threw that. Ray, if you thought fought someone who threw that many punches, you'd remember. <laughs> so I'm going to answer for him and say no. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, BJ. Nice body shot by Figueroa. I just always appreciate the guys are in tremendous shape. I mean, these guys, this, this pace has been unbelievable. And hard shots. And overall, a thousand punches have been thrown in the ring over the first seven and change of this 12 round fight. 7 07 by Figueroa. That says a lot. Astronomical numbers, guys, but he's also going to realize, you know, the number of punches, the output is great. He's got to be careful defensively, though, because when you shoot that many punches, it does leave you open for a lot of good counters, and DeMarco's been able to take advantage of that at spots in the last two rounds. Well, I think, well, he's been countered, but he has such a great chin, by the way. But Ray, you don't want to find out how good your chin is in a fight like this. Uh, one of my good friends, David Hay, always told me, I don't want to know how good my chin is, and uh, Figueroa is letting us know how, how his good, what his chin's like. 
Yeah, he's doubling up on that jab to the chin. Tried the roundhouse left. Final seconds. Round seven. Offense and head movement. That's all we need. Offense and head movement. You'll open up big shots where you're going to hit them hard. Don't let them take you to the ropes, OK? Get out. Turn. And you turn off them ropes, and when you got to pin up there. That's the only time when he can more. hit you harder, when he takes you to a rope. Marv Albert, Sugar Ray Leonard, DJ Flores from San Antonio, Texas. And we are at the AT&T Center. San Antonio, the home of the San Antonio Spurs. And we may set all kinds of records for most punches thrown in a fight in modern times. Got to be careful, Marv. You know, DeMarco's really starting to sharpen up to see the Figueroa punches coming in. So like I said in the last round, it gives DeMarco chances to counter him with those sharp, crisp punches that he likes. All right, to Kenny Rice in the corner of Omar Figueroa. All right, thanks, Marv. Omar Sr., your son so far, he's throwing a lot of punches. What do you think about the way he's fighting late here? Well, uh, that's what he's got to do. He always throws a lot of punches. He's uh, like he's get, doing a little defense in there. So, I mean, we knew that Marco was going to be a tough customer, and he's proving it to be. I mean, he's, he's tough. You think DeMarco is getting stronger as this fight's going on? Uh, it looks like he's, he's, coming, he's coming stronger every round, but uh, Omar... Omar has a big heart and Omar's fighting back. Can Omar finish this fight or is it going the distance? We'll find out right now. I mean, uh, he's, he's, he's still throwing a lot of punches. And uh, I, think, I think he can finish the, 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 the fight strong. So that's what I'm hoping for. All right. Thank you, Omar. Marv. All right. Thank you, Kenny. What are your thoughts about what uh, Omar Sr. had to say? I think he's correct. I just think he, I would tell my son, hey, listen, let's not shoot so many punches, but let's be more responsible on what we do shoot, and let's make what we do shoot count a little more. Yeah, more. I think he hasn't really planned his shots and started, instead of throwing such a volume of punches, because that really wears you out and it puts you open for a shot. 100% right. And there's that shot right there. Nice counter left hook from Figueroa right after he got caught, though. You love the toughness and the temperament of this kid. Even if he's uh, not committing on all the punches, it's still fun to watch. <laughs> I like DeMar when DeMarco, when he, when he spends his, again, when he spends his man. Oh, yeah, and his corner told him to do that. Very good instruction. Hey, don't let him put your back on the ropes like that. Spin out and make him pay. But he waits too long. Entire fight has been close quarters. Figueroa will get three, four shots in, and DeMarco perhaps one. And DeMarco once again back to the ropes this round. He landed some good shots, but it's just not enough, Ray. He gives it away every time he goes against the ropes. Final seconds, round nine. It's been a battle inside throughout the night. It has, Marvin. It's been a phone booth type of fight. You see both guys exchanging, landing good shots. DeMarco not landing near as many as Figueroa. Figueroa coming forward, constantly landing more shots, but maybe DeMarco landing some of the cleaner, crisper shots. More good stuff from Figueroa. Piles and piles of punches. Uh, this is unbelievable how many he's, he shot throughout the fight, guys. And uh, there's more good stuff from Figueroa on the inside. Picks the right punch at the right time. Maybe he doesn't put the most on it, but he knows what to shoot and, and when. And he's scoring points here. A total of more than 1,200 oh punches Three. thrown Three. thus far. Hey, you got this, baby. Okay, hey, you got this, baby. You got him. Keep it tight, man. Keep it tight. Come on. I want to keep moving. Keep moving. Come on, baby. Come on. Our 
Figueroa. At 25 years old, he is a Texan out of West Luco. 25 and 0 with with one draw. Antonio DeMarco, a 29 year old out of Mexico, at 31 and 5 with a draw. 23 by knockout. What does the Steve Farhood scorecard tell us? Well, Marv, DeMarco has won two of the last three rounds on my card. Figueroa has definitely slowed up a little bit. The question is, for so many rounds, Figueroa set a pace DeMarco couldn't match, and Figueroa built a big lead. So I don't know that DeMarco can win this fight on points. Steve, I agree. I, I don't think there's any way DeMarco can win this fight on points, but you see when he opens up, he lets his hands go. He's very crisp with his punches, and uh, he's got a lot of conviction on him, right? Well, DeMarco, I mean, again, he started off against the ropes for, for the majority of the earlier rounds, gave away those rounds, and now he's faced with a dilemma. He has to really come on strong or put Figueroa down. Maybe he played possum a bit too much, Rick. I think, you know what, DJ, I think he was playing possum because he, he has a, again, he has a great chin. He's took a lot of shots. Like here, he should not be there. And the scouting report coming in is that the chin was on the shaky side for DeBarco. It's correct, but he's been fighting some guys who, uh, you know, really big punchers in Figueroa at 135 and coming up from 140. Figueroa was never the biggest puncher, you know, at those weights. He, he's got a lot of power, but he combines his punches and breaks his guys down. It wasn't one punch power bar, so it's a little different. And with Figueroa, yeah, that's the accumulation of punches. Correct. Of such a volume of shots, it wears you down. And now with both guys coming in at 150 and 149, you know, DeMarco's maybe got a bit, little better frame uh, to carry that kind of weight, so he's taking the shots well. Still got to give credit to Figueroa for shooting over a 1,000 punches through 10 rounds. It's amazing. It is truly amazing. Combination by Figueroa. Nice body shot by DeMarco. And he's using that right hook of the body, Ray. I'd like to see him mix in that left uppercut and then the right body. There it was right there when I said that. <laughs> Beautiful shot. Well, DeMarco back with the combination. I mean, he's not winning the fight, Mark, but you can tell the punches of Figueroa aren't really doing too much damage to DeMarco. And a low blow. So the referee... John Shirley with the with the stoppage Time. gives the indication of a timeout. One thing's for certain: no matter how this bout concludes, Antonio Demarco will sleep very well tonight. <laughs> and take a look here at what happened on the low blow. You see him going in there, landing that right hook downstairs. It was definitely low, guys, and. Uh, if I'm Figueroa, I'm going to take as much time as I need to make sure I'm 100% prepared. Uh, didn't seem intentional. It's close. So that is it for round 10. This one is scheduled for 12. Marco coming on the last the few TV? rounds. Where's the TV? Can you see it? Is that low blow? Is it low? Is it low? Come back. Don't let him. No le den ni una chance que, que piensa que puede ganarte, okay? Omar Figueroa Sr. in the corner of his son. Omar introduced to boxing at a young age by his father and trainer. He has won 15 straight following an eight round draw back in November of, of 2010. It is on to round 11. DeMarco jumped off his stool in the beginning of this round, Marv. I think uh, by his body language, he's looking to get something done in this round, so we'll see what he does. Nice left hand, clean by DeMarco, just a crisp shot. And DeMarco can do a much better job in, in the middle of the ring. He can really ha have more control. 
because guess those ropes, he's in trouble. That left hand can't miss now, Ray. Setting it up nicely. Oh, here comes DeMarco. Another left. Put a combination together. Because now he's in the middle of the ring. DeMarco coming on. Figueroa's hurt here, guys. He hurt him. He hurt him. Figueroa in trouble. It's DeMarco again. Figueroa almost went down just a moment ago. And this Upper. is where the... Uppercut from DeMarco. Figueroa, incidentally, has never been down. That's a pretty good... Pretty good chin, I'd say. <laughs> like I said, I don't want to find out how good my chin is, but you know, Figueroa's definitely got a chin. Look, DeMarco landed so many clean punches in there and uh, really did a lot of damage with those shots. And the way you can tell Figueroa was hurt, Marv, is because everything slowed down for him. His punches, everything, so uh, definitely affected. DeMarco, if he keeps him and keep his man center of the ring, he can keep him off balance too, give him angles, land those punches. That could possibly put down. You think Figueroa, Figueroa. may have thrown, uh, punched himself out? Or DeMarco might have punched himself out? No, Figueroa. Oh, yeah, it, it's possible, but, um, you know, I think the effect of the DeMarco shots are, uh, you know, starting to do some damage. And he's just fighting at a weight more that he shouldn't be fighting at. He's used to doing a lot more damage with those punches. And as you get bigger, the damage isn't as much. DeMarco needs to throw two punches, not one, two punches. Well, this is where Figueroa wants DeMarco up against the ropes once again. Look at what happens when it's two combination, two punch combination. Just a huge round for DeMarco, Ray. Final seconds of the round. And here we take a look at one of the punches that started all the damage. DeMarco with a beautiful right uppercut and just really went on a flurry on Figueroa. Let his hands go hit with all kinds of clean punches, body shots, hooks, uppercuts, and crosses. You look a hell of a job. Yeah, you look great, job. Yeah, my, okay. body, my body doesn't feel as good as before, so I'm doing my best. Yeah, I know you will, but you got the heart of a lion. Man, you got to finish strong, okay? Okay. Punches thrown through round 11. Figueroa closing in on a thousand. Crowd loves it. 12th and final round. Apparently a slippery, a slippery spot on the on the canvas. Okay, that's good. They did run off three seconds. Time in. Last round. Muy bueno, muy bueno. Marvin, I like what happened there in the corner of Figueroa. He said, you know what? My body doesn't feel as good as normal. Maybe it was a tactic. Maybe it was an accident, but there's a lot of ice on that corner. Maybe that was a corner giving them an extra 15, 20 seconds of rest for their guy in this final round. Yeah. You sound like someone who's had experience with that. <laughs> I might have thrown out a few ice chips myself during my uh, 35 fights. <laughs> This is when DeMarco want to let it all go. Let it all go. Both hands, middle of the ring. This has suddenly become a close fight after Figueroa had his way early on. And just all the clean and the sharp punching Marv has come from DeMarco. It really has. We can't dispute that, but pure activity. Figueroa just doesn't have any much life to him at the point. There's not much zip on his punches, Ray. Exactly. And he's been hurt by DeMarco several times tonight. I don't care if he's went down or not. 
Well, he's got to be, he's worn down from throwing so many punches. And I think uh, after this fight, he's going to sit down with his team and say, you know what, we need to evaluate what's best for me as far as what weight I need to be fighting at. Because my punches weren't having the same effect tonight. Look at that, 1,031 and counting in terms of total punches thrown by Figueroa. And it reminds me what the great trainer Emmanuel Stewart used to say, you know, Evander, when he was hitting Riddick Bowe in the second fight, he was moving him. He wasn't able to move him in the first fight. And Antonio DeMarco's moving Omar Figueroa when he punches him, but not vice versa. And DeMarco continues to get stronger as his fight continues. Got the left hand in. Coming up on a minute remaining in this final round. Those Let's punches, I mean, he... DeMarco's landing the perfect shot, but it's come back with something else. It can't be one punch. It has to be two punches. You know, in your mind, though, Ray, sometimes when you're in there, it's so pretty to watch it land, you don't want to shoot the second one, but you need to shoot the second one. <laughs> exactly, BJ. Let that, let it go. And it's Figueroa trying to hang on. Another left hook by DeMarco. He's taking some real punishment in there, guys. Even if Figueroa gets this decision tonight, which he, he might and he probably should, but he's taking a lot of punches and uh, very, very tough, uh, tough competitor. Series of combinations by each fighter. Now he's throwing two punches. But only 15 seconds remaining. Strong close for DeMarco. DeMarco hurting Figueroa. What a fight! Wow. They go the distance. Back with the decision in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, Glenn Feldman, scores the fight 115 to 113. Judge Larry Hazard Jr. sees it 116 to 112. And your third and final judge, Valerie Dorsett, sees it 115 to 113. They all see it for the winner by unanimous decision, Omar Pantanita Figueroa Jr.